Hey guys, how y'all doing? Welcome into Faith in Football. My name is Neil and I will be your host today. Today we're talking about that big payoff, you know, that big chunk that we all want, but sometimes we don't really need it. Had an interesting conversation today with uh, one of the guys on Sleeper over a trade question. And it was funny that I had this conversation because our verse today comes from Mark chapter 11, uh, verse 22 through 24. And if you're familiar with the book of Mark, I've been reading it uh, here lately and very direct, very to the point. Uh, probably one of the most poignant uh, gospels that you're going to read. It's not that long. Um, Mark was very to the point. He was very like, here you go. Here's the facts. Here's what's going on. That's it. You know, no, you know, no uh, exploration into the, uh, the details or anything like that. He just gave you the facts. <clears throat> so verse 22, this is what it says. And just a couple of verses before this, um, Peter, they were, uh, Jesus and his disciples were walking by a fig tree. And a few days earlier, Jesus had went to go pick a fig from this tree and there was no fruit. And he said, may no fruit, may no one ever eat of your fruit again. Well, they walked by the tree a couple days later, and Peter's like, hey, look, the fig tree that you cursed is withered and died, and it's from the roots up. It's crazy. It's like, you know, what's going on? Jesus looks at me and says, have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up, thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must first believe it will happen. And have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. See, we read things like this in the Bible. And, you know, we, we read the, the scripture talks about the if you have the faith of a mustard seed, which if any of you have ever seen a mustard seed, it's really, really small. And Jesus said, tells us that if you have faith that small, just a minute amount of faith, that you can do mighty and great things in his name. Well, here's the thing is, as humans, we read that Jesus tells us we can tell this mountain move and it's going to be thrown into the sea. But what we don't realize is that it doesn't always happen the way we think it's going to happen. You know, we hear that and we think, oh, this, we a hey, mountain, move. And this whole mountain is just going to like supernaturally levitate itself from where it's at and fall into the sea. And when things like that don't happen to us, we start to doubt God and we start to doubt our faith and we go, man, is it, is it really true? Is it, can, can I really do what God's telling me I can do? I don't know. You know, maybe I need to rely on something else. And, you know, that's when we get in trouble and we go off on our own and we think that we can accomplish the things that we need to accomplish without God's guidance or provision. But here's the thing is that God never told us that the mountain was going to move all at once, but he did say it would move. So maybe we need to take it a little bit at a time, but trusting that God is going to give us the strength and the knowledge and the courage to move each of those shovelfuls of dirt from that mountain and move it into the sea. Yeah, it might take a while. God never promised speed. He just promised results. He never said, hey, it's going to happen like that. He just said it's going to happen. So the same way in fantasy football, when we're drafting, you know, we're thinking that we need to hit it out of the park in the draft. And we got a lot of y'all's drafts either coming up or they've already happened. And when you're in that draft, you're like, man, I got to get this player. I got to get this guy. I got to get a home run running back. I got to get 
you know, uh, a lockdown wide receiver. I got to get one of the top quarterbacks. I've got to do this or my entire season is going to be shot. How many times do you do that in your life? I got to get that job. I got to get that promotion. I got to do this work. I got to get that raise. I need to do this. I need to do that. What you need to do, start looking up. What you need to do, start praying. What you need to do, start believing and having faith that God's going to put you where he wants you, where you belong, instead of relying on yourself. Trust me from years of trying to do things on my own. I've learned that I really am not that smart and I'm really not, you know, that intelligent of a guy to know exactly where I need to be all the time. So I'm trusting that God's going to put me where he needs me as opposed to where I want to be. Sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable. Sometimes you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. Sometimes you're going to have to pull back on those things that come naturally to you. See me, I'm a natural fixer. I want to fix things. My wife has a problem. I want to fix it. My son, my, any of my kids have a problem. I want to fix it. I want it like that. Sometimes you just need to stop and listen. And you need to pray on what God wants you to do. Because left to our own devices, we're a wreck. And I speak for myself in in that. So I hope that that was insightful. I hope that it changed your your perception just a little bit about what faith in God really means. And that it's not instantaneous, but it is a guarantee that he does promise and he delivers on his promises. So I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you, you're having an awesome morning. Uh, it is about 6.45 in the morning a.m. Um, here in uh, in louisiana uh don't know when you're watching this but uh if you would down the bottom subscribe like share leave a comment and uh, i would love to hear from you love to talk to you a little more if you have any questions any trade questions uh any questions at all uh anything you know regarding the bible that you like to discuss uh, look i'm no scholar of of scripture uh, but I would love to uh, to discuss anything you have with you. And hey, maybe you can bring some insight to me. Who knows? So welcome into Faith in Football. As I said before, my name is Neil and I will be your host. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about those big chunks. You know, when you get in the draft and maybe you're like the guy I was talking to on Sleeper, he was the sixth pick. And his question was, do I take Zeke? Or Adam Jones. And I told him, why do you have to take either one? Why not just take Devontae Adams or Tyreek Hill or shoot, even lock up Travis Kelsey that early? Get that positional advantage. And he came back with, yeah, I know, but man, I, I, I just, I need that running back. I need to lock it down. And he told me he was in a three wide receiver. Uh, with a flex position, full PPR league. Now, I know some of you out there going, you just spoke a whole lot of Greek to me. Um, Well, here's the thing is that if you have three wide receivers and a flex, you actually got a possibility of having four wide receivers. In a PPR league where you get a point per reception, wide receivers are way more valuable. And since there's only two or three real good pass catching running backs and all three of them are going in the top four, then guess what? You're not going to get those guys if you're at the sixth pick because here's how the draft's going to go. If you've got anybody who's worth anything in your league, CMC, for those of you who don't know this, Christian McCaffrey, running back for the Panthers, Dalvin Cook, 
and Alvin Kamara. That's usually picks one, two, and three. Now, every once in a while, yes, you do get that guy who goes, you know what? PPR be damned. I don't care. I'll pick up a receiver on the back end. I'm good. I'll take Derrick Henry. Then at number four, Kamara is gone. So by the time you get to the sixth pick, usually Nick Chubb goes fifth. Then you're stuck with Zeke, Eckler, um, Jones. So what do you do in that situation? Well, here's the thing. Number one, I told him, trust his gut. Because his gut was telling him one thing, and everybody else on Sleeper is telling him another. So I'm just, look, it's your team. Do what you want. If it was me, I would go ahead and lock up Kelsey or uh, or Adams or Hill at that point. And then I'd come back around, maybe pick up a guy like Najee. Uh, you could probably pick up Joe Mixon. You know, guys like that. Guys that are, yeah, they're secondary. And even uh, CEH, uh, Clyde edwards Hilaire. Uh, out of Kansas City, you could pick him up in the second round. His ADP has been falling a little bit, uh, so you might be able to get him a little later. So, yes, midway through the second is probably a little early uh, for a CEH. There might be a couple other uh, receivers there that you might like. And look, there's nothing wrong with going receiver, receiver, and then taking one of the running backs in the third. Okay, but here's the thing is that you're going to miss out on a few guys that can make a difference and then everybody else is pretty much garbage. Uh, They're all interchangeable when you get to a certain point. So something to keep in mind. So what we're going to do today after we talk about the news, um, we're going to do a mock draft from the sixth position in a 10 team PPR league. So. That being said, let's get into some news. Boy, do we have a doozy coming for y'all. Look, one of the questions that I got on, on Sleeper, and I love the Sleeper uh, the sleeper app. If you haven't switched to it, please do. Um, I did a, a draft for another league on the NFL Fantasy app, and I forget how much better the Sleeper app is. Um I just, I like it so much more. It's so much more fluent. Uh, the community is a little better. Um, it's just, I, I just find it to be an all around better app. So uh, some minor news, the Seahawks have released uh, tight end uh, Luke Wilson. Now I only bring that up because Adam Troutman is on the men. So with Troutman being on the men, Luke Wilson could be destined for New Orleans. You never know. Um, on the hype train, there is a belief that Mac Jones has won the QB spot in New England. Now, if that's true, I will tell you right now, Damon Williams is going to, or I'm sorry, Damon, Damon Harris is going to be a huge acquisition for you later in the draft. Okay. Some people might not want to draft a, a New England running back. I get it. I get it. I've been there, done that. I've lived that life. Okay, Um, but this year's a little different for the past two decades, with the exception of last year, we had Tom Brady under center with Mac Jones. We don't know what we're getting. We don't know if it's Brady 2.0. We don't know if it's just, you know, uh, a whole different version. We don't know how this offense is going to run. We know how it is traditionally, but one of the big pieces of news that I wanted to discuss was has to do with a New England running back. New England traded Sony Michelle to the Rams who have been hurting for running back or actually at least looking for a running back ever since Cam Akers got hurt. So this has been an anticipated trade from what I understand. Um, look, Cam went down apparently they don't believe in Daryl Henderson that much. If they did, they never would have made this trade. So they get Sonny Michelle, add to that backfield, Daryl Henderson, 
And it's going to be interesting to see exactly what they do. So something to keep an eye on. And it kind of bumps up Damon Harris. Another big piece of news that we need to talk about, pardon me, is uh, Jacksonville. Travis Etienne out for the season. Yes, you heard that right. Liz Frank injury. He was in a walking boot, got hurt in the preseason game. Now, James Robinson was already taking a good portion of the first team snaps. Uh, so with that happening, let's see. Trying to find my news for you here. Yeah, he's likely to end his season. And like I said, um, with Travis Etienne being out, then that bumps James Robinson way up, gives him a big bump. You don't have him, you know, looking over his shoulder. There's really nobody else that they're going to be uh, replacing him with. Now, he might not get the same workload that he did last year, but hey, even if he's cut by 10%, 20%, that's still 70 to 80% of the snaps because he was taking 90 last year. Now, I do want to take a second, thank my sponsor, Zia Rotisserie Grill in Lafayette. You can find them on Duce Road. Uh, they were behind the Grand Theater off Johnson Street, and they were in front of Red Laurel's Health Club. You can call them at 406 0013 in, during the month of August, you're running out of time. If you haven't been down there, go check them out and mention Faith in Football sent you and get your free appetizer with your purchase of an entree. Uh, and who knows? You might see me down there too. Just ask if Neil's, Neil's uh, there. So, <clears throat> sorry guys, I'm getting a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of traffic on my, uh, my sleeper feed, and this is what I what I love about uh, sleepers. Guys react quickly to your comments. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, you go down, check the Zia out, uh, say hi. Tucker's back. Hey, Tuck, what's happening, brother? Uh, say hi to Tucker and uh, Leonard and Heath and all the guys down there. Uh, again, tell them that Neil from Faith and Football sent you. Get your free appetizer. Look, I'm telling you right now, the ribs are off the chain. The rotisserie chicken is awesome, but the grits are to die for. And right now, they also have a trout mock shoe. If you don't know what that is, what are you doing in Louisiana? I don't understand, but definitely worth checking out. Go down there, get your free appetizer, and try one of those awesome entrees. All right, guys. Also, need to thank my purveyor of sweets to the set of Sweet Teeth, Keller's Bakery in Youngsville, 627 Lafayette Street. You can find them on Facebook. They do take orders through there. Tell them that Neil sent you from Faith in Football. If you do that, you'll get you two free mini cupcakes, any flavor you want. Go down there and check them out. They have a variety, a wide variety. You're talking about rainbow? Forget the rainbow. This is like Baskin Robbins of flavors, okay? They are outrageous. Their pies are delicious. Their cakes are to die for. And if you're planning a wedding, they do wedding cakes. They do king cakes. Don't know what a king cake is. It's basically like a big donut. Okay. This is phenomenal stuff. Go down there, check them out. And if you don't know exactly what you want, take those, those, those little mini cupcakes that I'm offering you guys for free. Go down there, check them out, and tell them Neil from Faith and Football sent you. So. Let's get into today's mock draft. Brought to you by the good people at Sleeper. No, not a sponsor, but if you're listening, I would love it because you guys have done a phenomenal job with this website. So as I said, 10 team league. And now a lot of you might be going, well, why don't you do a 12-team league? You know, why, why, why not that? Well, here's the thing. 
when you mock draft, you should mock draft for the draft that you are actually in. I am in a 10 team PPR league as my league of record. Um, so on my league of record, I'm going to be doing 10 teams in a PPR. I'm not sure of my draft spot yet. Um, the only person who gets to pick their spot in our league is a returning champion just so happens to be my wife. Yes, you heard that right. My wife is a returning champ and not just that, but if I didn't mention this, she saw this, she'd get on me. She is the two time returning champ. So she is as the fantasy footballers say, which love you guys too. They call them the champ champ. So champ champ for our league is my wife and she will be picking her spot uh, to draft in and the rest will be left at luck of the draw, which we will be drawing less than two weeks from today. We actually have about 12 days left before draft day. So not that much time. If you guys from my league are listening, better bone up and get those mock drafts in and get some practice because coming for y'all. So full PPR, let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Now, as normal, now, uh, the first three picks, that's pretty much what's going to happen. And you have a lot of people who uh, I'm seeing are taking Kamara number two or number three. They've got a lot of faith that with the absence of Michael Thomas, uh, they've named uh, – James Winston as the starting quarterback for the Saints for week one. Now that's subject to change. And here's the thing about a quarterback situation like that. You've got a drastic difference between Kamara and Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, totally different style than James Winston. Winston, a little more traditional. Uh, Hill, you know, is zinging down the field. He loves to sling that ball all over the place. Uh, Taysom Hill has a really short clock up here. And I don't mean he's short on brains. I mean that the, uh, the amount of time that he thinks that the pressure is coming is a little shorter. So he doesn't really read that much, um, which leaves him not a lot of time for check downs, which is where Alvin Kamara lives. That's a lot of his production. So with having Winston that does give Kamara a little bump, Winston's got to do well. If he doesn't do well, then, then Taysom's pretty much going to be able to slide in there. Um, I like the Kamara pick. Maybe not a number two because I trust Dalvin Cook a lot more than I trust Kamara in the Saints situation. So uh, team number four is going with uh, Zeke Elliott. But Zeke, I had this discussion earlier on Sleeper, and I'm telling you right now, I'm not, I'm not leaning on anything from Dallas. They're way too dependent on Dak. And it came out, um, I believe it was Adam Shefford, don't quote me on that one, uh, reporting that the injury to Dak could linger throughout the season. Why Saquon Barkley's up here, I have no idea. Um, I'm a little snake bit by him, but that's just me. So, as I said in the open, I'm at the sixth position. Most of your top flight running backs are gone. Now, here's the, here's the, uh, the dilemma you're going to fall into. If something like this were to happen, I personally am going to take Nick Chubb. Yes, I took Chubb over Henry. Uh, I like Nick Chubb. I think he should have been taken higher in this round. Um, and then you see Taylor Eckler, and I'm loving Eckler this year. If I'm farther down in the draft, I'm definitely trying to, to circle back around. And that stack of uh, Hill and Eckler, I'm loving that combo. Taylor and Diggs, not so much. Uh, I, would, I don't know. I lay off with J uh, Jonathan Taylor. That's just me. Uh, that's just the feeling that I have. And then you see Adams going at the end of the round. Maybe 
see if this had worked out different, if this had worked out how it was supposed to, it would have been uh, Chubb and Henry going at four and five. Then you have to choose between Elliot Barkley, Jones, and Taylor as your remaining running backs going in the first round. Now, one or two, maybe three of them are going to be circling back around. But I do like Team 10 right now going Adams Kelsey, locking up two posi- two positional advantages right there. Um, they can come back around in the third and basically take the leftovers at running back. Um, but I've got Nick Chubb and <sighs> – See, this kills me right here. It's because I love some Najee. Uh, judging by the jersey behind me, you know that my heart is with Antonio Gibson. Um, Joe Mixon is an interesting proposition as well. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going to go ahead. If this was my draft, the, this was, was what was really happening. I'm going to lock up that running back position because – Volume, as they say on fantasy footballers, is king, and the volume is going to Najee Harris. He is going to be that running back, that workhorse running back that you're going to be able to get along with Nick Chubb. And what I love about Cleveland is that once they get up, they still they're going to pound the ball. They've got a good defense. It's going to you know allow them to hold a lead. Then when they get there. They've, they've gotten smart enough under Stepanski uh, in the second year to realize that they're, they can just run the ball out here. Okay. And Nick Chubb is probably a three quarter back. And then the fourth quarter is going to be all Kareem Hunt. Uh, I get that, but I'm still loving Nick Chubb's production. So running backs that are left. And this is why I try to lock this position up. Um, if at all possible. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, but this is one of the things that you have to remember when you're doing a draft. Yes, you don't need that home run back, okay? If you look down here, you got Tyreek Hill first and then Eckler. Eckler's perfectly capable of being extremely valuable for you, okay? But he wasn't one of those, you know, oh my God, I need this guy type guys. Then you can come back, possibly get Derrick Henry or uh, Dave Montgomery in that spot, Chris Carson, there's J.K. Dobbins, who people are really, really high on. Uh, DeAndre Swift, look, there's too many questions on Swift for him to be this high. I don't understand why everyone hasn't laid off of him yet. But I'm going to go ahead and check out wide receiver. In the wide receiver position. Hmm. See, I like all four of these guys. I've got eight picks before my next pick. So somebody's problem. Most of these guys are going to be gone. So who do I really, really want? It's not a running back because I've already got that locked up. I'm going to try something here. And this is why we do mock drafts to see how things work out. I've been taking Keenan Allen a lot. Okay, when I say a lot, I mean almost every draft that I'm in, I try to leave with Keenan Allen because he's always there in the third. Good spot for him. But there's a lot of upside to Terry McLaurin. And we see J.K. Dominus, DeAndre Swift, Sanders Waller gone. Keenan Allen and Robinson I lost. But... Mike Evans is still there. I don't like Julio, and here's why. There's too many questions about his durability. He's always dealing with an injury. It always questions you. I lived this life last year. I don't want to repeat. Sometimes that comes back to bite you in the butt. Not all the time, but definitely something that you need to be cognizant of when you're doing a draft, okay? So, with that being said, I'll go ahead and take Mike Evans here. 
lean on that. We see Kyler and Josh Allen going in the third and fourth round. Now, coming up here, and we see Lamar going in the fifth. That's pretty much average. That's about on point. So I would have loved for uh, Chris Carson or David Montgomery to, uh, to come back around, but I'm going to lock up my wide receivers, knock those guys out of the park. Because as, as I said, this is a full PPR. Now, I'm going to play the game. I'm going to go ahead. Now, if you look at quarterback, you've got Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, Dak, Aaron, uh, Mr. Rogers, and Brady. So a lot of these guys are going to start going off the board. I can probably wait until the seventh before I make a selection, and I'll still be able to get, pardon me, a very serviceable quarterback because I want you to look at something real quick. And this is something you need to be aware of. Look at your board. Okay. You got four four quarterbacks off the board. Okay. There's a, there's two guys on the first half of me and three on the other side that don't have quarterbacks. Okay. So let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and play the game. Also playing the game on a couple of running backs later that I like. And when it comes to Coop and Woods, or Coop, <laughs> Cup and Woods, I'm kind of split. It's basically what do you feel? I think that Robert Woods with Matt Stafford addition uh, is going to be a lot better. Uh, so we see Team 10 pass on quarterback. Team 7 they passed on a quarterback as well. Did lose out on James Robinson. That was one of the guys that I was going to target this round, if possible, got taken just a little bit before me. So I'm going to fall back to my other guy that I definitely want to leave a draft with, as Javante Williams. I know a lot of people are going, oh, Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon. Look. Williams was drafted to replace Melvin Gordon, okay, plain and simple. Now we see, I um, think it's team two, pass on quarterback, so Herbert's gone. So I still got the quarterbacks that I, that I want out there. Um, Rodgers, Brady out there. I can get serviceable with Stafford if I want to do that stack. And I've got two guys ahead of me that still need quarterback. Okay, so is there anybody that you see that you can't live without, that you definitely want? And we see TJ Hawkinson got taken. Uh, that would probably be the only tight end that I would have drafted possibly in the fifth. Um, that's a spot that he's going a lot. Um, I could have taken him here in the six, which would have been probably a, a little bit below his ADP. His ADP is putting him about fifth. So, some, you know, it, he's going to probably be a breakout this year. So, if you want to target him, I understand you are going to have to probably pass on one of the top quarterbacks that you want and some talent. So, I'm good with streaming the position. I'm good with taking a, a, a flyer late on some guys. So with that being said, take a look at wide receiver. There's Brandon Ayuk. I really don't want to lose out on Ayuk. And there's really nobody at running back that I really, really, really want. So with that being said, let's go ahead and we'll take – Brandon Ayuk, and see what happens. Rogers is off the board. Prescott's gone. So that leaves me with the old man. 
I can go ahead and take Brady here in the eighth. And that's about where you're going to get him. And we see Jerry Judy go off the board there. Robbie Anderson, who just got paid. Um, I love the fact that they paid Robbie Anderson. Uh, a lot of wide receivers going in the eighth. Uh, Cortland Sutton, I'd kind of lay off of. I like Jerry Judy more. So let me see wide receiver. I've already got Brandon Ayub, so there's really no reason for me to go after Debo. And I've got Mike Evans, so there's really no reason for me to go after that. But one of the guys that I did speak about later in the rounds is still here. That I absolutely love as a sleeper. And this Damon Harris. And this is a guy that does not have to go, does not have to wait for an injury to happen in order to be something for your fantasy team. He can, he's right off the bat. Trey Sermon, he's got to wait for injury. Michael Carter, we don't know what's going on with him. Damon Harris has proven he's been in the system. He knows what's going on. Okay. Uh, and we see David Johnson here. Last year, I was loving me some uh, DJ. This year, I'm hands off the entire backfield for Houston until they clean that stuff up. It's just an absolute mess. Now, here in the tents, I will tell you this. Love me some Ryan Tannehill. He's going really, really late. But with me having Robert Woods, give me that stack. Give me that Stafford Woods stack that I can have along with the Brady Evans. Uh, so when I say stack, I mean when you have the number one pass catcher for your quarterback. So uh, right here we see Tannehill going off the board in the 11th, followed by Joe Burrow and then Jalen Hurts. All three of these guys are backups. Uh, we see Logan Thomas go off the board, which I would have loved to have had a shot at. Um, but I didn't want to lose out on Stafford or Tannehill. So if I had taken Logan Thomas, I would have lost out on both of those guys because I'm guessing that Jalen Hurts or Joe Burrow could have been replaced and they could have fallen to me. And I don't like either one of those guys at this moment. However, the tight end I do like, Robert Tunyon. Now, if I really wanted to go with a, with a massive stack, I could have taken uh, Tyler Higbee. And then we see, if you've watched the show at all, you know that my defense just got taken right after I took Tunyon. So let's see what I've got left. Ravens, Rams, Steelers, Browns, Niners. I'm cool with all of those. I really don't need them right now. So who do we have left? Uh, Mike Williams, Pittman. Um, if it wasn't for the injury concerns, I would say Mike Williams hands down with the injury concerns, eh, running back. Uh, Edwards is a really good value. If you want to go with him, that's fine. That's, uh. You're, that's going to be banking on J.K. Dobbins getting hurt. Because here's the thing is that while Gus is really good at fantasy, he's dependent, uh, he's touchdown dependent. He's going to need that goal line work. Okay. He's not going to get between the 20s. When they get down to the red zone, that's when he gets his work done. But you've also got a running back at quarterback with Lamar Jackson. So at this point in time in the draft, if you want to take flyer on him, I understand you're in the double digit rounds. Cool. I get it. So do we see anyone else here that we really, really like? Not until I get a little farther down. It's probably going to be my next to last pick, to be honest with you guys. 
and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Wide receiver, I'm going to go ahead. I want to make sure that I'm leaving with a guy that could, could break out. But I trust Justin Fields a lot more than I trust Carson Wentz. And we see Pittman, uh, Pittman and Williams go off the board right after the uh, Darnell Mooney pick. Darnell Mooney, I really like. He's, he's done really well. Uh, we see a run right there at the beginning of the 13th on defenses. If I wanted to, I could probably um, wait another round. But actually, I probably will. <laughs> Uh, just for some fact, there are so many defenses gone. The one that I really wanted to lock in uh, is out. And don't be afraid. This is one of the things. Don't be afraid to stream the position at defense, okay? Play your matchups, okay? Look at your matchups. See who you're going to play. Because you're going to have some defenses. They're going to be playing really good teams. And they're not going to get you any points. But if you lock yourself into that one defense, and let's say that they get scored on, it's 21, 28. Yeah, the team might win, but you're going to lose. Um, you know, you, you just got 21 points scored on your defense. You want somewhere where you're playing, I don't know, pick whoever's playing Detroit, whoever's playing the Jets, whoever's playing Jacksonville. I don't know. Um, there's always that team that everybody wants to play because they, everybody knows they're going to they're going to win. Houston, Houston scoring like 12 points a game. Okay, maybe. Um, so something to think about if you want to. I, I would be extremely comfortable streaming defenses. Uh, so. Let me lock in some more depth. Let's check out running back. He's still here. I'll go ahead and take a flyer on him. It's somebody that you, Gus is somebody that you can stash. Not have to worry about. Now, I really like Trey Lance. I, I think that there's a lot of upside there. And a lot of guys are torn between him and Justin Fields. And you see Fields going uh, just a few picks before him in the 13th. Whoever you think, okay? Uh, whoever, look at who has better weapons, who has better situation. I think it's Trey Lance. I think that Lance has a much better upside, uh, not necessarily because he's a better quarterback, but because he's in a better situation. Remember, here on Faith and Football, we preach, aside from the Word of God, um, we preach environmental drafting and environmental roster management. That means looking at the environment around the player, not his stats, okay? Look at Justin Fields. He's got Allen Robinson at running back, Darnell Mooney, who hasn't broke out just yet and uh, David Montgomery, that's it. Look at Trey Lance, Raheem Mostert, George Kittle, Debo, Brandon Ayuk, and a killer defense. What can I say? That's just a better situation, okay? Plus the fact that I trust his head coach a lot more than I trust Chicago. So Matt Nagy, I'm good. I will... <laughs> I'll take Shanahan over and have you any day of the week and twice on Sunday, okay? So, who do I want at defense right now? Who's left? To kick off and let's see. Real quick, let me look at this. And this is one of the things I'm going to be talking about in upcoming episode is going to be schedules. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the story of David and Goliath when we, when we look at that. And that's probably going to be on 
September 9th, which is the uh, kickoff episode. So week one, if I take the bills, they got the Steelers in week one, okay? I'm looking for, and eh, Colts get the Seahawks. Tell you what, go ahead and give me New England. Let's see. <laughs> Patriots get the Dolphins week one. I'm cool with Belichick going up against Tua. How about you? Plus, he gets all his players back from COVID from last year. This New England defense, it's going to be killer. Week two, let's see who they at. Week two, they get the Jets. Tell me that's not a cake schedule to kick off the season. Thank you very much, NFL. So you guys might be wondering, who is this last mystery pick that I'm just holding out for? None other than Mr. Chubba Hubbard. Look, if you haven't seen this guy play yet, you need to go watch him. He is absolutely phenomenal. And if, God forbid, McCaffrey get, get injured this year or miss any kind of time, this guy is going to be extremely valuable in your fantasy leagues. So there you go, guys. Remember, you don't need a big chunk. You don't need that killer to kick off your draft. Is it nice to have? Yeah, of course. But you don't need it, okay? We see here, uh, let's see. I had mentioned Team 8 earlier, how I like I like their uh, their team that they put together. Check this out. Tyreek Hill, Austin Eckler, Josh Allen, Darren Waller. Every single position is locked in. Okay, these all these guys are locked and loaded at their position. Darren Waller might as well be the number one receiver for the Raiders. Josh Allen, we've seen him. He's going to be phenomenal. Eckler, second year with Justin Herbert, definitely going to be involved in the passing game. Good PPR choice. Tyreek Hill, lights out, shut down, forget about it, done. Okay. Then we go into Cooper Cup and James Robinson. And that's your that's your second guys. Come on now. Then you've got uh, Devontae Smith from Philly. They're taking a flyer on him. T. Higgins, probably going to be the number one in Cincy. Debo Samuel, you guys saw. I took Ayuk, but I'm definitely cool with Debo. And Antonio Brown. Look, they're getting a piece of that uh, that offense in Tampa Bay. Can't blame them for that. I really don't care for the Zach Moss pick. Tampa Bay is going to slaughter the Cowboys week one. That's an awesome pick for it to kick off your uh, kick off your season. And then Justin Fields. I said it before. I like Justin Fields. Yes, I like Trey Lance a little more. But if you're looking at a backup quarterback with a lot of upside, Justin Fields is definitely one of your boys. Tony Pollard and J.D. McKissick rounded out as handcuffs now i don't encourage you taking two handcuffs simply for this reason uh you're betting on injury okay yes tony pollard has some value as a standalone okay he's going to be used uh we're just not really sure how much jd mckissick Everything that I'm hearing out of Washington is that Antonio Gibson is going to be a three down back. So JD McKissick's role could be diminished just a slight, just a slight bit. But all in all, 
I really like this team. And guys, there's no, aside from Tyreek, I mean, there's no Tyreek and Waller. I mean, those are two of the guys at the top of the, the top of the charts. Josh Allen, yeah, but you know, you can interchange him with Murray, Rogers, Brady. You got him a little later and just giving up a little bit there. So you don't need that stack. Like you know, take what the draft gives you. Okay, the draft gave me Nick Chubb and Naeem Harris, or Najee Harris, sorry. That's what, it, that's what I got. That's what it gave me. That's what fell, okay? Remember, just because you don't get the player that you're targeting doesn't mean that you can't get a good player. Just the same way that just because you pray and don't get it the way you want it doesn't mean the Lord's not listening. So, remember, down below, share, like, comment, okay? And remember, God is listening. Maybe you just need to talk to him a little more. He is our father. And remember, I can tell you right now as a dad, I would love for my kids to talk to me more. So, consider that when you're praying next time. Y'all have an awesome week. We will see you back here Tuesday. Got one more week. One more week the next time we see each other before draft. And a week and two days after that is the kickoff of the NFL season. Welcome back to the NFL. Guys, have a great day. God bless. We'll see you next time on Faith and Football.